Hi everybody and welcome to the video. I generally like to think that I'm pretty sweet, but today's video is going to be really sour. There is a lot of reading to be done about fermented foods and I am always on the lookout to add interesting, healthful things to my diet. Would you say that's pretty fair, Victoria? Pretty fair. Pretty fair? Pretty fair. All right. Well, I am not really that up on fermented foods. I decided that sauerkraut was something that I wanted to investigate because apparently in as little as a tablespoon a day, the benefits to sauerkraut are insurmountable. Victoria here saw the sauerkraut in the fridge and said, hey, can I open that sauerkraut? And I said, not unless you want to be in my video. So here yeah, she is. Yeah. And we are going to dip into the sauerkraut and I am going to have a tablespoon of sauerkraut every day for the next seven days. We're going to start with a tablespoon. And if you want to have more, do you know that you really have to build up to it? You have to give your gut time to acclimatize. Let's dig in. And I should, maybe I should have brought two. It's okay. Okay. It's a big, I think you kind of just need to one bite it. Oh, oh, you know what? It is good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of um, like coleslaw, but more sour. sour. I guess it doesn't have the sugar in it, but it's very, I can see why this is very popular. It's really good. I just like the crunchiness too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. Dramatic. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ease in on the one tablespoon per day because one of the overwhelming factors about sauerkraut is it can really have a laxative effect. But there's a whole lot of wonderful effects, including positively, possibly. The laxative effect. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> it could be a positive effect too. And we're going to talk about that as I check in over the next number of days. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make my own sauerkraut because apparently if you have a mason jar, some cabbage and some salt, you got sauerkraut. So I knew that I was going to make sauerkraut for everybody today, but what I decided to do was in fact buy the fermentation kit. I could have just used a jar, but then they said I had to start like burping the jars, watching for the overflow, letting it out. Whereas when I bought this, it has these special lids that allow it to breathe. So I'm going to do that. There are only two ingredients in sauerkraut. How easy is that? Cabbage and salt. They suggest sea salt, fine grind, non iodized, if you can get that. And so that's what I have. And that's the only tricky part, it seems, about the sauerkraut, is too much or too little salt. For a head of cabbage, now this one is bigger than what they call for. They say actually to try and get a smaller one, two pounds, around two pounds. Uh, this one is over three pounds, so we'll have to see what we can do. And a tablespoon of salt per small cabbage. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into quarters and we're going to take the core out first and then I'm going to shred it. Once I have one quarter done, then I'm going to put that into the bowl, a big bowl, and I'm going to sprinkle, so I've got a tablespoon of salt in here, and I'm going to just sprinkle some of that over my first quarter. Here's where the work starts. We've got our cabbage, we've got our salt, now we have to incorporate this all together and then we're going to have to use our RMT skills to massage this to start the juices coming out. Because we are not adding anything more here, just this. I've got that pretty incorporated with my hands and now I'm going to use the pickle packer. And we're supposed to pound it. So you pound it down. And then you turn it over and then you pound it some more. What we're supposed to do now is pack the jar. So it says put a couple of handfuls into the jar and then use our pickle pusher to pack it down. Now, apparently a two pound cabbage should fill a quart but I don't know. We have This is a liter jar, so I, I don't really know about all that. All right, so you see the water that's come out? Apparently, if you take a little taste of it, it's supposed to taste like the ocean. Oh, yeah. 
tastes exactly like the ocean. It tastes really salty, but it's supposed to like, you know, kind of mellow. I was supposed to save a leaf for the top and cut it about the same diameter as the jar. This is just going to help to keep all the little bits down. Look at that! So that the little bits are not going to float up to the top. Now what's also included in my fermentation kit are the pickle pep <laughs> the, the pickle pebbles. So we got the pickle pusher and the pickle pebbles. So this goes on top and it's just like a weight. So this is going to try and keep everything down. So the brine should actually come up to the pickle pebble. It says that if it doesn't yet, I leave it a couple of days and keep my eye on it. If it does not submerge by that point, I can add um, some salt with water in order to make it cover. At this point though, what I do is I use my pickle pipe. I use this, which is vented, has a hole. And we put that on top with our ring. Okay, so I'm gonna put this downstairs. I'm gonna check on it in a couple of days. In fact, I'll let you check on it with me in a couple of days while I'm still taking the sauerkraut that I bought and we'll see what's happening with it. Good morning and I've got day two going on here with my sauerkraut. I've got about a tablespoon and they generally suggest having it early in the day in the morning. So I'm having it now just before I go to my Orange Theory and there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So we don't want to ramp it up too high because the sodium is quite high, 130 milligrams per tablespoon. So if you have a situation with high blood pressure or renal problems, you really do have to watch that. But tablespoon a day, if we want to ramp it up a little bit, hmm, we'll see how it goes. I'm on day five of my sauerkraut challenge. And I have to say one thing, I really like it. Like it's really good. So you may know that fermented foods are high. In fact, number one on the superfood list. I'm also gonna like take it up a slight notch. I don't really feel like I'm noticing anything yet. So why not go all in? I don't think seven days is gonna be enough. I don't know how long I'm actually gonna go. So the one thing, that most people associate with fermented foods as a health benefit is gut health. And probably that is the number one thing, but it is not the only thing by a long shot. Also is really great as an immunity booster and it also protects our liver. The high fiber in the cabbage is excellent to keep us full longer, helping us to stick to a diet. And let's just take a check-in. I thought we should do a little check-in on my sauerkraut. And you can see here, so if you can see here, the bubbles, this is the kind of things that we're supposed to be looking for. So I ended up with two and a half. And there's a lot more liquid. So these bubbles out here, also the color of the cabbage turns kind of less green, more like this. I don't see any sediment at the bottom yet, we are on our way to our own homemade sauerkraut. We might have to, we might not even have to be at the store with this one, but we'll see. I'm kind of excited about that. I thought I should have a little check-in with you guys. I'm on day eight of the great sauerkraut taste test. And I have to say, first off, I am loving this. Like I doubled the dose. I'm up to like two tablespoons a day instead of one. And it is so tasty. And look at everybody in the family is loving it too. Now, you know, there are a couple of side effects that you should be aware of just during the phase of getting used to it. You could experience diarrhea, you could experience flatulence, you could experience some tummy bloating, and I do feel that I am experiencing that, and we are, has been about, you know, maybe day seven, day six, day seven, um, day eight, and I did up the ante here as well. As well, some people do find that they get itchy skin and a runny nose. Also keep in mind, watch your blood pressure if you do have an issue because the salt is a little bit on the high side. I also want to show you my, as we're coming along with 
my homemade sauerkraut. I did have to add some salt brine, half a teaspoon of salt dissolved into half a cup of water. Um, the pickle pebble is supposed to be covered and it says that after a couple of days, if it's not wet enough, that you should add that. So I did, but there's still lots of good bubbles going on. And I think that, that we're on track. So I'm, we're gonna go for, I, I'd say at least the two weeks and thoroughly enjoying it. Welcome to day nine of the great sauerkraut date. And, and let me tell you something very, very unexpected has happened. I have fallen in love with sauerkraut. This is like the strangest thing ever. This I have found is just something that I adore eating. And I'm gonna add this now to my sandwich for lunch. It's an amazing condiment. And it's kind of like, you know, if you swiped, I don't know about all this Tinder stuff, but swiping right, I think is a good thing when you find it attractive. But I think I might have swiped left at first for sauerkraut. And now I'm thinking I wouldn't have given it a good chance because this is really delicious. And I'm happy that we're gonna go away past seven days. If you had told me nine days ago that I'm now gonna have sauerkraut with cooked chicken as a snack, I would not have believed you. But I can't get enough of it. It is just that good. So this is what I am gonna have for a snack. Cheers. Here we are at day 18 of the Sauerkraut Chronicles and I am still loving it. So let's talk about a few more of the positive benefits of sauerkraut. Well, first off, there's bone health, and as we age, bone health is super important. So the vitamin K in the sauerkraut is a definite bonus. We have the bladder protection, liver protection, and can even help with our skin concerns. Who has some skin concerns when they hit 60? I don't know. Fermented foods also play a role in cell mutations, so it may help reduce our cancer risks. The high folate content of sauerkraut can definitely help reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease and our risk of stroke. Interestingly, it's also an anti-inflammatory that can help with our gum health. So another bonus, there are so many things that are really great about sauerkraut. The other thing that I want to do today is take a look at the sauerkraut that I've been making. It's been resting now for two to three weeks, so we're on day 18, and now we can test it, and that's what we're going to do. You can notice here, and I'm gonna get my cameraman to do a close up, but there is some like white sediment and that's all a good thing that we're supposed to be seeing. So we're gonna see how it is. If it's not ready, then we can just put it back and let it carry on. If we think it is ready, then it goes into the fridge and it's ready to eat. I take my pickle puck out. It is really, really good. Holy mackerel. And that was so simple. I think mine's ready. It tastes delicious. So I'm going to transfer it to the fridge and I can start eating that next. We're 30 days in. And do you think I'm sick of sauerkraut? Hell no. I love it. It is like changed my life. Let me tell you that in the 30 days since I started this sauerkraut challenge, I've really been investigating a lot more about fermented foods and about our gut microbiota and all things related to the good bacteria that we really, really need. Our gut is not just our stomach. We need a good microbiome right from our mouth all the way down through our colon. These are these really good bacteria that we really need. So how have I done? on the sauerkraut challenge. Well, number one, I love the taste, which makes it really, really easy to take. I've stopped taking my probiotic that I really, to be honest with you, forgot to take half the time because I'm getting all of that in the sauerkraut, which is really a lot less expensive. If I haven't mentioned it before, you need to know that when you're getting sauerkraut, do not get the tinned variety. You are not getting the fermented part. You're not getting the live, bacteria. On top of that, I've made my own sauerkraut, which was so, so easy that you saw and really delicious. One thing that I did find at the beginning, I did have some mild bloating in my tummy, but I got used to it. And the other thing that I did notice 
was my fingers were swelling a little bit at the beginning. And I think that that was the higher salt content, which is not something that I'm used to. So I kind of backed it off a little bit and that totally seems to be fine. I'm finding no ill effects whatsoever. And I have to say that the overwhelming thing is I feel so good about taking it. It's like, I know that I'm doing something that's good for me and it makes me feel good. I feel great. Victoria and I started doing just some fermenting. So, you know, we did some red onions and these aren't quite ready yet, but you can, I can see the, the bubbles which show me that that's fermenting. And we did also some uh, baby cucumbers and we added some garlic and some fresh dill and some peppercorns. It's, it's so easy and so fun. So I'm gonna put the link for that um, also in my description. I was very fascinated listening to Andrew Huberman's talk on the gut microbiome. And I'm gonna link that also into my description. And I have to tell you that this has been a huge success, something that I'm definitely gonna carry on with, something that I hope that you're gonna try. And overall, generally health-wise, in my digestion, in my overall sense of well-being, it's a two thumbs up. And I think sauerkraut is where it's at. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.